Greetings everyone, DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hope you guys can hear me pretty well. Uh, this is going to be a pretty short video, but um, you know, I was in a earlier conversation and the conversation, uh, I was asked a question and um, we started talking a little bit about, you know, Independence Day, uh, 4th of July, and what that meant to me being, you know, a Hebrew Israelite, you know, and I, obviously that means, you know, nothing. You know, that's, that's just the honest truth of, of it. it. It doesn't mean anything to me because obviously, you know, my people didn't receive any independence. We weren't liberated from Great Britain. Hell, we were still uh, in, enslaved by the colonizers who had liberated themselves from Great Britain. You know, if, if you really believe that they ever liberated themselves from Great Britain, I mean, you can do a little research on that. But, you know, uh, Frederick Douglass said it most eloquently. You know, what, what does the 4th of July have to do, you know, with the so-called slave? So, uh, well, not so-called slave, but with the slave is the way he titled his message around 1850. But even in the in the conversation, that's not where the conversation stopped. It, it was a question that uh, invoked, a, you know, some greater, at least they were, we were seeking greater perspective on, you know, what were the things or what, what were the particular things that happened in my life that created the biggest transformation? And, and it's not, and when I, and please understand, I'm not talking and speaking to my, speaking about myself in some kind of third person format or uh, as though, you know, I'm the only person that, that has gone through transformations. Every uh, intelligent person should be constantly transforming. You should be in constant transformation. If you're not, then you are in, in a, a perpetual state of death, the walking dead. You heard me talk about that uh, the other day when I gave you Matthew 8 and 20, at Matthew uh, 8, chapter 8, uh, 21 and 22, where Yeshua called, let's say, let the dead go bury the dead. Uh, if you're not in a state of constant transformation, then you're in, you're in a zombie state. You should forever be learning, forever increasing your knowledge. That's 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 if you are intelligent. Again, and that's no disrespect. I'm not trying to diss you or disrespect you. I'm just telling you, you know, just like your body transform, your mind should be transforming too. And surely Yeshua told us, you know, by the transforming of your mind, you know, that we should be constantly renewing ourselves, your mind, body, and spirit. But we were talking, you know, what were some of the biggest transformations that had happened for me? And, you know, the question came up, well, what about pork? Was that when you stopped eating pork? And I haven't eaten a piece of pork since the early 90s. And this is 2020. Since the early 90s, I haven't eaten a piece of pork. I can't stand it. It's a, it's a piece of meat that's full of parasites, full of worms, and I don't care how much you cook it, how much you boil it, how much you fry it, you're going to eat those parasites. You're going to eat the worms that's in that meat. It's an unhealthy uh, rodent, and, and, and human beings, at least Hebrew Israelites, were instructed from the early on not to, 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 to eat it or even to touch it. We should even be working in pork processing plants. You know, if someone asks you to pick up a piece of pork in the a, in a market, you should be doing your best of, to try to get someone else to do it. I say, well, here it is. You can get it because you're not even supposed to touch it. I know sometimes that might be difficult, but to consume it, that's a mistake. But, but, but not eating pork was not my biggest transformation, although it was a big transformation because, again, it really made my body start to feel a hell of a lot healthier. And as far as sickness and illness, it's very seldom that happens to me. Very seldom. Common cold, but that's about it. And again, you guys, most of you guys know my age now. You can take a look. You know what I'm saying? Not boasting, not bragging, but I'm six decades old. Okay. So, all right. And take it how you want to take that one. And then, you know, was it when I stopped eating beef? I stopped eating beef in the early 90s. That was not my, it was a big transformation because a lot of the foods that you enjoy between that pork and beef, man, you know, you're knocking, the, you're probably knocking 80% of that out. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't my big transformation. It made me feel good inside because I knew I had to, it showed me that I had to discipline you know that that was necessary if I want if I truly wanted to stop doing something and then you know after that then it was, it was then what was the you know was it when you stopped eating potato chips which that's only been you know in the last year you know same thing with you know drinking cokes and things like that sodas only been recently I said no that's not the biggest transformation either although again you know in the last mm, six months I think I've dropped 30 pounds and I and I stopped drinking and eating chips and cokes about that time now obviously I live a very active life. I mean, I'm not some uh, triathlon, triathlon, a triathlete, something like that. No, I just I walk, I work, I lift, I bend, I reach, I grab. I'm just not a lazy man, okay? But you know, a lot of you 
a lot of us fit that description. And the question is, you drop 30 pounds just by just doing your normal daily activities, keep busy? I think not. But when I drop the, the potato chips and Coke, you know, sodas, that just dropped right off along with me uh, living an active lifestyle. But that wasn't my biggest transformation. My biggest transformation, psychologically, mind, body, and spirit, was when I was able to come to the realization that I am a Hebrew Israelite, that I am one of the several tribes of Israel, obviously the tribe of Judah. When I learned that 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 I was the people that I was told that was someone else, that the, that the whole narrative around we were spiritual, you know, Jews, if you became a Christian, when I realized that spiritual Jew had nothing to do with me, that was my biggest transformation by far. Because then I no longer had to walk on this land thinking that somehow or another that I was a refugee. I was some transported, you know, heathen from some, you know, third world country that still, you know, is struggling trying to find out who the hell they are. A heathen country, I might add. You know, a heathen continent. <laughs> Africa, yeah, there you go. After this, Africa is a country. Uh, a continent, I'm sorry, with many countries, 50 some odd countries. And when I realized that, you know, that I was the Hebrew and that the Hebrew wasn't someone else, that was by far the biggest transformation because then I began to realize that I did have a history because we were told we had no history, no, no farther than the enslaved and then a few inventors. But an inventor is not your history, something that, you know, um, you, you know, Garnett, who, who invented the traffic lights, that, 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 that's not a history. That's just an inventor. That's an accomplishment of one so-called African-American black man. Your history is your legacy. It's what your people did before you were here. What your, what your people have done to, to contribute to, to, to the planet. What your people have done to contribute to civilization. Well, you know, what we have found out, or what I found out, that my people were the very essence of civilization. Not chemistry, not that Kiptology foolishness, the Egyptology, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the hell they did over there, they were over there uh, killing their children and sacrificing, you know, sleeping with men with men and women with women and doing every kind of sleeping with children. You know, their, their pharaohs would die and they would take virgins and throw alive women in these goddamn graves with these men so when these men went to the afterlife, they'd have their virgin wives with them. What kind of heathenistic foolishness is that? It's burying people alive. And for you cryptologists and all these, that's, that's a part of your stupid. <laughs> that's a part of your history. That's not our history. We would never take the life of an innocent person because when our time comes to go, we leave happily. Because we know that Yah has something better for us. Our destiny don't end, doesn't end right here. Okay, in this life. There is another life for us, a continuation for many of us anyway. Those of us who have, who have become, who have accepted the knowledge of who we are. When, as you heard me say before, when Yeshua told, you know, our early ancestors to go out to the whole world and preach redemption, go out into the whole world and tell the lost sheep who they are. And once that message had resonated through the whole world, then he would, then the end would come. You know, I am a product of that message finally reaching me, hopefully many of you. When you come into that knowledge of who you are, that is gonna be your greatest transformation. Your greatest transformation. And when I mean coming to the knowledge of it, resisting people telling you, well, it doesn't matter and I don't wanna hear that and you know, you're being racist and you're being a separatist. No, 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 it has nothing to do with that. This particular day, Independence Day, is a day of high pride for Americans. They have no problem acknowledging their independence from Great Britain. They have no problem celebrating their history from their ancestors. And you will never get them to denounce it. You hear Trump and the rest of them right now talking about if anybody start messing with Mount Rushmore or, or these, these statues, these monuments, destroying their history, destroying their pride, being anti-American, they'll lock their asses up in jail and throw the key away. That's how they feel about their history. So Hebrew Israelite, why can't you feel the same way about yours? Why, when it comes down to you, you can't have the same pride and self-respect that they have about their history. Some of it is stolen history, of course, but they damn sure stand with it. 
But some of us, when you tell us about our Hebrew, our Independence Day, coming into the knowledge of who we are as a people, the people of the Most High, then all of a sudden we get shy about it. We get bashful. Some of us just get flat out in denial and reject it. Like there's no price for that. The price for that is that the cost of you know, freedom is, is death. Brother Malcolm told us that, and Michael, Malcolm didn't coin that phrase, but that's the price of freedom. Dying to the old man so that the new man can live. So when I found out that I am the Hebrew, I am the man, I am the one that Yah is writing about in the scripture. All of my, all of the prophets, all of our ancestors are writing about in the scripture to encourage me, to help me to understand my past so I can understand clearly my path, my pathway, my future. That was the thing that liberated me the most. That became my true independence. And this is what I'll say to you, fellow Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. Why don't you celebrate this independence that I just showed you, that you are the people of Yah. You are the original people. You are the civilization people. You are the cultural people. You are the standard bearer of the people. You are the light that set it upon a hill. You are really the hope of the people. That's why your heart's so big. That's why your heart is so big. Your compassion is so strong. Your anger is so strong. Because you are made in the very image and likeness of Yah. And Yah is a killer. Yah can be violent, but yet Yah can be loved. And Yah can be compassionate. But only for those, you know what I'm saying, who embrace and who walk after the, 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 the knowledge of self, after the knowledge and the commandments and the laws of Yah. Even if you're struggling with it, being conscious of them, working towards it. So if you're going to celebrate Independence Day, why don't you celebrate that Independence Day? Why don't you stop and say, you know what? Today is the day that I recognize that I am the Hebrew Israelite written about in the scripture. Why don't you let that be your Independence Day? Then you can truly be proud. Then you truly should celebrate. Then you should truly have your Jubilee. Forget Juneteenth. How about Jubilee? The time of your liberation, the time of your freedom, both mind and body. Coming into the knowledge of who you are as the people of Yah will do more for you than anything you could ever imagine. So let's start that way today, my brothers and my sisters. Why don't today you say, you know what? I celebrate my independence. And what do you mean? And they say, what do you mean independence? So you're celebrating the 4th of July? No, it has nothing to do with the 4th of July. It has to do that I am the people of Yah. And now I know who I am. I am no longer lost. So now Yah can put in me the changes that I need to make so that I know how to deal with the heathens on this planet. And most importantly, so now when I call out and call on him, he comes. If you guys are tired of this, 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 the tyranny, you know, of living in this oppression and stress and police brutality and murder and savagery that's committed against us, the born and the unborn, then the only way that's going to truly change, sustainable change, is through your acknowledging who you are and call on Yah, who will hearken to the voice of the people if the people become one voice and one voice people. And that's not going to happen until we come into the fullness of who we are. So I'll end this message with Happy Independence Day, Hebrew man and woman. For the day is your jubilee and the day is your true transformation, your true independence, if you choose it. That's y'all said. Choose this day who you're going to serve. You know, do whatever you want to do. And as you've heard me say before, for as me and my house, this house, and the houses that I influence, <laughs> in other words, the people in my circle of influence, we're going to serve y'all. Love you guys. Happy Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite Recognition Day for those of you all who needed to get that entrenched deep down in your soul. Now go have a good time. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye now.